Hello and happy hump day, everybody. Um, we have some folks joining and uh, more joining by the minute. I wanted to make sure that everybody can hear me. So if you're on the line, I'm going to send out a quick poll. Um, uh, just going to ask, can you hear me or not? Let's see if this works. There will be a couple more polls later on in regards to the actual product. So I wanted to test out this functionality here. If you can, uh, if you can see the poll, please go ahead and respond, and then I'll close it in about one minute to start the uh, webinar. All right, great. I see some votes coming in, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And uh, and it looks like the general consensus here is that yes, we can hear. All right, so I'll go ahead and restart the screen share, and uh, we'll just give everybody a couple more minutes to join. Um, I can see the attendees ticking up here, so we'll we'll get started in just a moment. For everybody that's joining, I'll uh, I'll be keeping an eye on on the questions that come in. Um, probably will not get to them until the end. Uh, but if I see anything come in that looks time sensitive or um, relevant to the slide on the page, then I will maybe drop the answer for that right away. Um, and we will have a couple of polls as the webinar goes along um, in regards to code requirements in your jurisdiction and things like that. Um, so we'll get started in just a one, one or two more minutes here. Make sure everybody has a chance to join. All right, um, so I believe we should all be able to see the PowerPoint now, and I'll go ahead and get started. My name is Ian McCluskey. I'm an associate product manager here at Outback Power, um, and this is the FM100, that's FlexMax100 2019 update. This is the one of the Outback Power webinar series, and um, let's jump right in. So thanks to some crucial new additions to the FlexMax 100 platform, Outback's latest charge controller technology is really ready for your evolving market, wherever you may be uh, um, in the world. I know we have 
folks joining from many different countries and continents. Um, so I tried to make this presentation apply for everybody. And this new charge controller comes in a NEMA 3R enclosure. So that means it's outdoor rated and it brings our most advanced MPPT algorithm system integration with lithium ion batteries and all the features you need for NEC 2014 and 2017. And this webinar is going to be your opportunity to ask me the tough questions about the FlexMax 100 and find out why it's taken over in 2019. We will have time at the end to address as many questions as possible and uh, we'll make sure to reply to any that we miss at the end shortly thereafter. So. This is an image from uh, installation in the Rocky Mountains done by IPS Solar. So these photos are courtesy of IPS. Um, the case study, we have a video case study coming out on this very soon, about two minutes long with an interview with the founder of the company. And uh, I'm really excited for it. I think it's gonna be a really interesting case study that shows how these charge controllers, and you can see them here on the right side of the photo. Uh, on the right side, you can see the charge controllers mounted against the wall. Um, they work excellent in conditions with wide temperature swings, long home run distances, uh, large high power modules, high voltage modules. Um, so any any demanding installation, the FM 100s are the perfect product for that. Um, expensive labor is another one, as these will cut down on, on labor costs and uh, and we're really excited to see this case study come out in the next couple of weeks here. Um, all right, so specifying an IPI charge controller. The FM100 is our newest power solution with a max continuous output of 100 amps, which gives you about 5,000 watts. The algorithm, uh, the MPPT algorithm is enhanced and the, um, sorry about that. Uh, which is which has granted us an increased energy harvest, especially in harsh environments. Uh, we have some efficiency uh, charts coming soon for this product uh, that will show how that works. Um, the, it's rated for a maximum uh, PV voltage of 300 volts with active cooling. Um, it's Mate 3S and access port compatible. It's outdoor rated with built-in ground fault protection and field upgradable firmware. This all leads to reduced system and installation costs. All right, so we have a high level specification feature summary here. Um, Benefits of the FM100 include lower system cost by reducing component count, complexity of installation time, and making it a more cost-effective solution overall, uh, which we can see reflected in the prices of our system packages and uh, flex power packages. It's engineered for reliability, uh, with extensive quality and reliability testing, including the highly accelerated life cycle testing, also known as HALT. Um, and it's going to more quickly achieve cell state in grid connected systems by charging the batteries more quickly, which of course applies in off-grid systems as well, uh, charging the batteries faster than, uh, than most charge controllers on the market. Um, we'll do a, we'll give a quick moment here to review these specs. I think many of you that are on this webinar probably have looked at these before, but uh, it's, worth, it's worth a quick review. We'll just give 30 seconds here. You know, we have 24 to 48 volts, um, up to 6,000 watts uh, maximum array on the 48 volt system. And the maximum output current is going to be 100 amps. Um, make sure that the PV open circuit voltage is 300 uh, VOC uh, at the coldest temperature, of course. And we're looking at 99% efficiency um, for 48 volt systems, um, which is great. It's been really helpful. Uh, we have the Mate 3S to Optics system interface, and it's going to be Modbus, Sunspect, and Optics are compatible. So you can uh, design your own interface for this through the Sunspect registers if you so choose. And the warranty is five years. So this is a new product uh, just released. The RSD-AFCI stands for Rapid Shutdown. Um, 
arc fault circuit interruption. And this came out of our latest price list just last month. It's an end-to-end -end solution listed to UL 1741, and it costs about $300 less than the ICS Plus that you're probably used to, uh, which is the combiner for the FM60 and the FM80, um, because we were able to remove a number of components that were no longer needed. They're built into the FM100. So, of course, the FM100 is going to have a higher uh, list price than the FM60 and the FM80. However, that's because it's built. Uh, there's a number of functions built in that allow us to save an estimated $800 to $1,000 per um, per system, per charge controller, uh, in components and labor. Um, the RSD-AFCI contains a interrupter listed to UL1699B with local and remote indication, and uh, and it's a type 3 enclosure rated for indoor or outdoor insulation, which means you can um, you can actually mount it horizontally or vertically on the roof um, or on the wall, but most, most people end up mounting it on the roof, either next to or directly underneath the array. Um, so the FM100 is really ready for anything that comes along with the new NEC requirements. The current generation contains ground fault protection built in, which allowed us to strip down the combiner solution, uh, as we showed on the last slide. And uh, this is a big improvement over other solutions on the market that require significant extra, la extra labor and uh, balance of systems to make inspectors happy. So the diagram here depicts a system with the new RSD AFCI. Uh, it's a flexible design. Um, the, design the combiner box can be mounted vertically or horizontally, and uh, it's interoperable with third-party PV rapid shutdown devices. Uh, through a rapid or through a dry con dry contact option to the uh, FM100's auxiliary uh, ports. So we'll look at we'll take a look at that on these on these slides moving forward. Um, now, this is uh, in regards to module level rapid shutdown, and I'm sure many of you will have questions about module level rapid shutdown. It's a it's a hot topic right now, and uh, we will make sure to address it at the end. I want to get through the presentation, but I can. Um, for those of you who have to leave early and may, maybe we'll view the recording later, the Fire Raptor IMO FRS-01 uh, is tested and approved with the FM100, as is Tygo's TS4-R-S and TS4-S. Uh, the, at the end of the presentation, we'll look at a, um, some captures from the white paper that we're about to release on how that works. It's pretty straightforward. They do add, of course, some cost to a system, but they work, and uh, they work pretty easily with the FM100. So we'll come back to that in a bit, but let's get through the new additions to this system uh, platform here. So uh, new 300 volt load centers came out on the last price list as well. We have the GSLC PV300 VDC, which is the pre-wired uh, load center for the Radian, and it comes with uh, appropriately sized breakers, uh, voltage and amperage, to make sure that it's the right uh, the right solution for you and your inspector. Um, PV1, of course, is for a single string um, with a single FM100, or excuse me, not a single string, but a single FM100 with up to uh, 6,000 watts of PV. Um, and then the European or 230 volt versions of the same load center are available as well. And those are available now on our price list. If you haven't gotten the pricing for those from your distributor, uh, please, ask them for that pricing. Uh, that was sent out about a month ago, so the, uh, these products should be available online now through, uh, through your distributor. Of course, you can always contact uh, sales at outbackpower.com as well, or give us a call if you have questions directly. The new integrated systems include a, the FlexPower Radiant 8048 with FlexMax 100, and this is going to be the best price to power ratio that we offer um, right now. So this is the best price to power ratio for the flex power that, that Outback offers. You're looking at about 4,000 watts more PV capacity, um, and the actual price difference is, is minimal. It's worth uh, it's worth ask, asking your distributor once again, and I, you know, I don't want to give distributor pricing for you, but the but the list price itself is actually within. Uh, in a pretty close range compared to the FM60 or the FM80 flex power, excuse me, the FM80 flex powers, uh, flex power radians. And you will, if you take a look at that new pricing, you'll see the 
how clear the price to power ratio advantage with the new FlexMax 100 is. Um, fit 12 more modules compared to the same system um, with FM80s. And the reason this is possible is all of the value that we've built into the FM100 uh, that allows to reduce BOS components uh, that go into this system. So whether you buy whether you buy flex powers or you buy the components separately, you'll notice that if you really take a chance on this product, you'll see that the final installed cost, if you track the cost that go into your projects, really do come out. Um, you know, the price to power ratio is going to be much better with the FM100 than the FM80 moving forward. And you know, the FM80 is the FM100 is really ready for upcoming code changes. It's worth keeping in stock. Um, it'll be ready for whatever the NEC can throw at us moving forward. <clears throat> all right. So here's a list of all of the new flex powers. You got the 8048, so that's 8 kilowatt radian with two uh, flex max 100s, the 4048 with one flex max 100, it's 4 kilowatt, and uh, the FP2, FP3, and FP4 systems um, each come with two flex max 100 charge controllers due to size constraints. Of course, the uh, FP2 is popular, um, the FP3 and FP4 very large systems, um, and those are options is available on the uh, on the prices now as well, and they're all listed to UL1741 SA, which is great. Um, these new system edge packages were released on the last price list as well, so we were finally able to integrate our system edge packages with the FM100, and they you'll you'll notice a similar trend there with the price um, for those packages being very competitive on a, when you consider the power ratio. Uh, so of course we have the NC applications for off grid, the new brand new Simplify uh, battery that's a lithium ion battery up to 21.1 kilowatts with an 8 kilowatt radian, um, and that includes the rapid shutdown box, uh, and those are actually listed to you all. 19, uh, 9540. So this just we just got the listing for you on 9540. Uh, uh, if you bought the SE-821 PHI-300, you'll be getting eight kilowatts of inverter output. That's two flux max 100s for 12 kilowatts of PV capacity, 21.1 kilowatt hours of lithium ion in a UL9540 ready package. And that's and that actually should say UL9540 listed. The, uh, the declaration of conformity for that will be up in the next day or two. And that means that in California, you have a certified home energy storage system, um, which of course qualifies for things like SGIP um, and really should, should fly through the inspection process. Uh, those are perfect for energy management applications. And then we move on to the PLR, which is perfect for backup. So that's for um, folks that want to make sure that they have the available uh, the available energy capacity that they need um, when they need it to power their home. So here's a quick slide on lithium ion in general. This is our IBR rack that many of you are familiar with, with uh, the cabling redesigned to accommodate Simplify's 3.5 kilowatt hour 48 volt LFP battery. And that's a battery without cobalt. So no cobalt uh, labor involved and very virtually no risk of any thermal runaway, unlike uh, Unlike some other batteries on the market with uh, with cobalt in them, which has you know, a number of a number of issues, and it is now UL 9540 listed. So I just added this stamp the other day in preparation for this webinar. Um, we're excited about that. I think that'll be that'll be great for folks that are involved in programs like SGIP and other um, markets where uh, a 9540 listing is is important. So in general, the, the FlexMax 100 is really designed for a dynamic market, which is the nature of the PV market these days. There's a lot of challenges that we face, and, and these help. the FM100 is designed to address those. Uh, the 300 volt open circuit, of course, is going to label, enable larger arrays in wider climate conditions, um, the system designers are always aware of and always dealing with, and longer distance PV circuits. So you don't have to worry as much about voltage drop issues. Um, you have much more flexibility on your string sizing compared to most charge controllers on the market. The 100 amp output allows for higher power modules, which is, is in the, especially in the US, we see a trend in that direction. 
and uh, built built-in code compliance features and system integration like that we just went over the flex powers and system edges are going to reduce install time and effort significantly so this is the high-powered integrated solution for the new solar industry um, that brings us to the end of the uh, standard presentation and I wanted to make sure that we uh, had time to go over a couple polls that I, I have for the audience and then we can jump into the uh, to the slides that I have prepared for the results of these polls. So first of all, I'm going to ask, um, I wanna see uh, the folks that are on the line that are listening in, do most of your installations require arc fault circuit interruption? Um, that's AFCI, arc fault circuit detection. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this poll and see, see what kind of responses we get. Um, Cause I'm curious, the, uh, where folks are listening in from or where they've seen it. Of course, I think in the US, many folks are going to have to deal with AFCI, but but we're curious uh, what the results will be. So we got about 50% who voted so far. Thank you. That's really interesting. So we're coming up on two thirds have voted and it looks like about two thirds say yes and about a third says no. Um, I will definitely be taking a look at the results of this poll later to see where people are tuning in from and seeing uh, seeing how, the, how those markets apply. I think with the uh, with January 1st, 2019, AFCI is included in many states here in the US, but in, uh, in many other countries, it's still not a requirement and we're we're, you know, we're aware of that. We want to make sure that we have options available for both for both markets. Um, so it's actually swinging almost. Now we have almost 40% saying that it's not required in their jurisdiction, which is it's very interesting. Um, all right, in the second poll, I'm going to jump right into it here because then we can go to the slides that pertain. Let me go ahead and close that. Thank you for your responses. Uh, we'll go into module of rapid shutdown, which is a very hot topic right now. Um, I want to ask, do most of your installations require module level rapid shutdown? We know what we're hearing is in California. This is generally the case um, and in many other states, but uh, but outside of the US, this is this is pretty much unheard of. So and that's yeah, so the, the results are coming in very similar to what we would expect there, about half and half. Um, there are, as, uh, as I would expect, there are a number of markets that uh, require AFCI, but do not require module of rapid shutdown. Okay, now we've actually swung a little bit in favor of the yes, so now we're closer to uh, closer to 60% saying yes. Well, let's move right into uh, how we're trying to help deal with module level rapid shutdown with the FM100 um, with, with our partners, Tygo and IMO. Um, We'll jump into those slides. So here we go. Thank you for your time. <laughs> we can go back to uh, if anybody has questions about the installation of the FM100. I've prepared a number of slides, but uh, we'll we'll address those questions at the end, and we'll go right into the rapid shutdown now. So 2014 NEC um, PV system circuits on or in buildings more than 10 feet from the array boundary. This is most people are familiar with this. So 2017 NEC is the one that just kicked in in many states and uh, is worth worth going into a little bit more detail or paying more attention to now. So it's a narrowed one foot array boundary, uh, separate requirements for outside and inside array boundary, uh, must be less than 30 volts at 30 seconds. So they increased the time limit a little bit, but uh, the voltage limit stayed the same. And there are three options there. So listed rapid shutdown array, uh, limit voltage to less than 80 volts, which is for most people not possible. And uh, similar to number three, uh, no exposed metal or conductors within eight feet of the array, not possible for most installations. Um, so the inside the array boundaries just kicked in this month or last month, excuse me. And uh, so that brings us to the next slide. Um, yeah, as you can see, the the adoption is, is really, uh, has really increased since January. And so we've made sure to adapt to that with uh, two new products that are available on the market now. Um, the Tygo TS4-R-S and the TS4-S are tested with the FM80 and tested. They, they We actually do have those tests with the FM100 and Skybox Complete with the white paper coming out shortly. 
Um, the IMO Fire Raptor is also tested with the FM100 and Skybox. And uh, so this is what this is what it looks like with the RSD-AFCI that we talked about earlier. So we'll quickly review this. You have you have your module strings going into the combiner box with a uh, single pole relay that's fed through um, the auxiliary port on the FM100, and the rapid shutdown box will, if you the you know the emergency switch will open that relay, thereby informing the FM100 rapid shutdown has occurred. So you have notifications in both locations on the FM100, um, any server that is communicating with, so optics, um, the Mate 3S, and uh, anything you set up through the SunSpec registers. It'll also indicate that through the LED on the actual rapid shutdown box itself. Um, doesn't require any fuses. Everything you need to install that comes with the RSD-AFCI SKU. And it's a, it's a simpler, lower cost combiner than what we have with the FMB, which required a number of additional BOS components and a much larger uh, power supply. Um, we briefly reviewed this, so I'll go ahead and move on to the, to the next slides where we show the IMO Fire Raptor. So this is a product that's uh, tested in the market and it's being adopted in, in many states. We have, there is a distributor, BND Industrial, that currently sells these and Outback is highly considering um, adding these to the list of our line of products as well. We're looking at uh, a pretty low cost solution here um, that doesn't require PLC or any other type of fancy communication. Um, and they come with its, it comes with its own uh, rapid shutdown initiator, um, which is, I have the SKU for that here, I think, let's see. Um, maybe on the next slide. But we'll, we'll show the SKUs for that. Uh, and so that rapid shutdown initiator communicates directly with your module level rapid shutdown IMO Fire Raptor devices. It also communicates with the combiner box to ensure that the combiner box opens as well. And then that communicates through a relay to uh, to the FM100 to ensure that the FM100 is aware and indicates an arc fault, uh, or excuse me, rapid shutdown condition as well. Um, so here's an actual wiring diagram for those of you who want to uh, want to take a moment to review this. This is uh, this is going to be on the white paper that comes out in the next in the next week or two uh, for the for module level rapid shutdown with um, Outback power devices. The white paper includes the Skybox as well. So if you're interested in the Skybox, there will be a section on uh, Tygo and IMO solutions with Skybox as well. So FRS-01 is the SKU for the Fire Raptor uh, module level devices. You can see the PV modules here. Pretty straightforward, pretty much what you'd expect with the uh, with the stringing going into our ICS plus dash AFCI. So this is this is mislabeled. I I will this will be updated on the uh, on the white paper itself, but this this box here um, above the charge controller representation should be labeled RSD AFCI. That's going to be the lower cost combiner for your installation. And the uh, the fire wrap the IMO FRS ESW is the initiator, and that's going to communicate to the FM100 through the Outback relay, which is the OB. Uh, OBR-16-DIN. It's a normally open relay that Outback is currently on our price list. Uh, the initiator is going to communicate through that relay to the FM100's purple and yellow rapid shutdown auxiliary ports that a uh, rapid shutdown situation has occurred, um, which will then communicate through to optics and that make 3 s etc. So it's pretty straightforward. You're adding, you're adding the module level devices, the initiator, both from IMO, um, the combiner and this relay. And so overall the cost increase is on par with what you'd see from any other module level solution. And, uh, and it's a relatively straightforward install, nothing too unexpected. Um, looking more closely at the uh, initiators internals, we have the power supply built in, the switch, and then the DIN terminals, which are going to connect to the relay that goes to the purple and yellow terminals within the FM100 um, to indicate the rapid shutdown event. Uh, the ICS Plus shows, so the source is going to go to your power supply source and your 
which can be powered from the a power supply that Outback offers, uh, PWR dash SPLY dash 24, it's a 24 volt power supply, or any other power supply that you prefer. Um, and then the FRS dash 01 module level devices feed into the ICS. That should actually say, once again, RSD dash AFCI combiner. This, uh, this white paper was just recently prepared in the last couple of days, so we're still working out the final details there, but this would be the RSD dash AFCI combiner. And, uh, the module level devices are going to feed into those into those terminals um, and they can combine in, within that combiner. So once again, um, you know, no need to screenshot this or anything. We'll be sending out that white paper shortly so you'll have this uh, available online soon, but you get a sneak peek on this webinar. Uh, so this is Tygo. Uh, Tygo is a very well-known uh, module level uh, device maker and the TS4-R-S is a common product. Um, the TS4-S uh, works in this case as well. Um, so you have your, your Cloud Connect gateway and your wireless communicator um, with the module level devices feeding into the RSD-AFCI. Once again, it's connected to the charge controller <clears throat> and, uh, and then Tygo's initiator here wired across a uh, dry, normally open contact. Um, this is a 2017 compliant uh, setup here, and we'll take a look at the uh, internals on the side. Let's see. So, here you have your Tygo gateway, and uh, the power supply is going, you can, once again, uh, Outback's PWR-SPLY-24 could be used there, or any power supply that you prefer. 24 volt DC. Um, the ICS Plus connects to that gateway um, and to the initiator as well, which has a two uh, normally open dual circuit compliance switch. And Tygo has their, their instructions for this initiator. Um, the white paper will delve a little bit more into the test procedure and everything that we that we used to test the system. Um, and then the FM100 is gonna attach to one of those switches to its yellow and purple uh, rapid shutdown ports. Once again, to indicate uh, to the FM100 that a rapid shutdown event has occurred. So these are the two primary uh, partners that we have now that allow for module level rapid shutdown. And these tests were completed very recently and this white paper will come up shortly. Um, and we wanna make sure that that if you have, if you need access to either of these products, if you have trouble acquiring them through your current distributor, our sales team can help. Uh, please give us a call or email sales at outbackpower.com and we can connect you with, uh, with the appropriate distribution to ensure that you have access to both of these options and can continue installing um, despite the new regulations. Um, and that I think, yeah, so here are the last slide uh, before we jump into questions. Um, Letters of compliance available from Tygo or Outback Power and IMO uh, through these links here. Um, of course, we'll send out this presentation in a PDF format and we'll send out the recording. Uh, so feel free to give us a call once again um, mm -hmm. at the number shown there or, uh, mm -hmm. or email sales at Outback Power with questions about this. And uh, many of you have my contact information as well, always available to answer questions about tricky uh, tricky code requirements like module or rapid shutdown. We know it's, you know, it's a challenge for, for much of the industry. So uh, we'll go ahead and jump into questions here and uh, I'll go back to the slide um, for the appropriate question as, as we proceed. So, okay, it looks like we only, we only have one question right now. So, oh, excuse me, no, that's not true. Let's see if I can expand this section here. This is my first time using our uh, Go to webinar uh, interface here, so I'm still getting used to it. So please define GSLC. Sure, Ed. Uh, the GSLC is the GS load center. GS is the um, abbreviation for a radian series inverter. Uh, most people consider GS as an acronym for grid support, but the radian series inverters have been out for a number of years now. Very popular line of inverters for off-grid and uh, hybrid uh, systems. Um, and the LC stands for load center. So that's going to be the AC DC uh, load center that goes underneath the radian. It's designed to integrate with the radian inverter. 
comes with your AC buses, generator buses. Um, uh, if you look up, there's there's a lot of information on our forum, on our website about that product. The manuals and the quick start guides especially are very valuable. I think the quick start guide is the best place to, to learn more about that product um, and how it's wired and uh, and why the, the new 300 volt versions are relevant. So the new 300 volt versions of the GSLC allow an installer to take a, as many FM 100s as they want and as many radians as they want up to our radian stacking limit, which generally is eight for most systems and, uh, and combine them within these pre-configured boxes. So you can either buy the empty box or buy the box with the 300 volt breakers uh, available um, immediately. Let's see. So I can only see like one question at a time here, so I'm going to go down here. All right, so from Christopher uh, Warfel, Warfel um, is the ICS box any smaller than the one made before the module level shutdown was part? No, Christopher, it is the same size uh, with fewer components inside. We have considered um, integrating sort of a string level AFCI solution or something like that to allow for a uh, smaller um, AFCI on the roof, uh, smaller AFCI solutions on the roof, but the issue there is the cost really goes up. So it's the same size, same enclosure, um, but lower cost because of the reduction in expensive components, um, which are now essentially built into the functionality of the FM100's hardware and firmware. Um, but same enclosure. All right. What is the link to the, so Ed, uh, again. See, I can only see part of this question. Can I click on it? Let's see. Is there still a concern? Yeah, I wish I could see more like this, maybe if I. Enlarge the window here. I want to get back to Ed's last question. Okay. So, what is the link to the website where we can piece hardware together and make sure we don't exceed the charge controller's capacity? So, that's a great question. Um, we do have a new string sizing tool that's focused on the FM100 and the Skybox coming out very soon as well, uh, prepared by Apps Engineering. Um, the main concerns for the FM100 is going to be 6,000 watts total PV nameplate uh, capacity and um, 300 volts open circuit DC. So with you know your dry bulb temperature, making sure that you don't exceed that 300 volt input. Most people are going to use either two to four, somewhere between two to four strings um, with six, seven modules or so, uh, giving you so say you know you can imagine. You can imagine 300 volt or 310 volt modules. Uh, you could fit maybe three strings of uh, six for a total of 18, which gets you right up there towards 6,000 watt PV. Um, but we do have a new string sizing tool coming out, and that will be on our website, outbackpower.com, if you hover over the resources button. Um, I'll make sure to note that down, though. And uh, when the uh, string sizing tool comes out, I'll make sure that Everybody that attended this webinar is able to access it um, and gets a gets a link to that plot, to that uh, to that tool um, to make that easy for for everybody so they don't have to chase it down. Um, all right, this one is there still a concern regarding the installation of an FM100 in parallel with an FM60 related to ground fault? Yeah, so there's there are a couple issues with doing that. We do have a white paper about that. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and send you that white paper, John. This is a question from John Harold. John, I'll go ahead and send you that, that white paper um, about how to combine FM60s, FM80s with FM100s in the same system. The trick there is the voltage difference um, in combination with the ground fault uh, breaker for FM60s and FM80s. It's not, we generally wouldn't recommend combining uh, FM60s and FM80s and FM100s in the same system. Um, however, I will send you that white paper uh, so you can judge for yourself how you would want to do that. Um, moving to the next question here. All right, so we have uh, K 
Kevin. Um, Kevin with Renbu asking, will these slides be available for download to share with my colleagues? Yes, yeah, certainly, Kevin, if you're still on the line, we will make sure to send out the recording and uh, and the slides as a, as a PDF for, for training purposes for everybody that's attended and everybody that registered and wasn't able to come, of course. Um, does the equipment have available fault current rating? Uh, does the AFC rating, can the AFC rating be series rated to higher values? Let's see. So, does the equipment have available fault current rating? Mention, you mentioned AFC, so by fault current, I assume you mean our fault current rating. Um, to higher values, be series rated to higher values. Uh, I'm not sure, Eric, if you are, Eric, this is uh, Mr. Hardwick, if you're asking in regards to the sensitivity of the AFCI um, device in the combiner. Uh, but if that's the case, I will have to ask. I do not, I'm not sure if we would be able to adjust the, the sensitivity on that device in series, but I'll go ahead and make a note of this and uh, and reach out to you when I find an answer. Um, that's an interesting question. All right, uh, a couple more here, it looks like. Does Outback have any products that address DCR fault requirements which started in 2014? Um, yes, so the, the, the RSD-AFCI addresses that our fault it is compliant with 2014 NEC. Um, and then, of course, on the Skybox, the Skybox is going to have the latest arc fault, uh, the latest arc fault requirements to, to match those high standards. And um, Skybox, of course, is a great product. Doesn't really overlap with the FM100, so I'm not going to jump into that right now. But the, uh, of course, it being a very much a grid type focus, uh, hybrid energy solution. Um, but the AF, the RSD AFCI would be the combiner you want for arc fault requirements. Um, and as our new products come out, they will certainly meet the, the increased stringency of our fault requirements, which of course is a challenge, as many people know. But we are are uh, we are investing the engineering time to to make sure that, that we comply with that. Um, all right. So Eduardo uh, Delgado, thank you for this question. Can you please explain how the strings are wired to the RS uh, module? Yeah. Let's go back. I'm not sure which module you mean, so we'll quickly we'll quickly go back um, through a few of these. Let me make sure there's no other questions before we jump into those. Just, I'll go. I'll I'll come back to that question, Eduardo, since it'll probably be the way we wrap up. Um, simple insight into complex data via historical graphs. Yes, uh, Mackenzie Clark, we are spending a lot of time on optics, on developing that and improving the graphs. Um, uh, the graph abilities within optics. I think you'll be pleased with some of the upcoming um, releases there. I've seen a number of graph uh, requests by customers being uh, added to optics functionality uh, for charge controllers and inverters both. And uh, for example, with the new AFCI or the new AC coupling um, firmware for the Radiant, uh, you know that's that's that'll be a really that's a really exciting feature that we'll be releasing in the next couple of weeks as well. So uh, definitely keep an eye on optics updates, and you're always welcome to add your specific request through the optics voice of customer link. If you're logged into optics, there's a on the bottom right there's a there's a link there that allows you to send in a ticket, and I can assure you that the engineers do look at that tickets right away. Look at those tickets right away, and and uh, definitely. Put them on the schedule to uh, to update and upgrade the optics uh, graphing abilities. All right, Ed, this is the last one before Eduardo's question about the wiring. Um, any noteworthy changes in the Mate 3s to accommodate the F100? So, uh, Ed, it's important to note the Mate 3 is is out of production. The Mate 3s uh, replaced it uh, a while back, and it is the um, it is the latest Mate 3 or excuse me, the latest Mate uh, hardware. It's um, the firmware for the Mate 3S, we have a uh, new firmware release coming out very shortly, which is going to accommodate the AC coupling uh, for the Radian. And uh, and it, the Mate 3S is the the electronics within it. Uh, I'm not going to get I'm not going to be too detailed here because I, I it's been a while since I since I read the engineering report on this. But essentially, uh, the tactile sensor on the Mate 3S is 
designed to be uh, a bit more sensitive to allow for use with the FM100 at the higher power. So you won't have any of the uh, interface issues that, that you may have experienced if you were combining a Mate, an FM100 with a Mate 3 with a Mate 3S. The electronics inside are designed to, uh, to work with the higher power FM100. All right, so, oh, got one more. Okay, so Eric, available fault current is related to short circuit values. All right. Um, Eric, uh, just to make sure that I can get to Eduardo's question, I will follow up with you on that uh, offline, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send you an email with what I find on that question. So come back to Eduardo's question real quickly. Let's just take the last couple of minutes here before um, before we need to go to uh, to quickly review the um, the connections between the for the rapid shutdown options. And if I wasn't able to get to your question, I apologize. It's like I said, it's I'm only able to see about one question at a time, so I, I think I got through most of them. But uh, but if not, I will uh, make sure to follow up with you afterwards. Um, to answer your question. So let's go back to the, if we're gonna stick with module level since it's the newest one and uh, and the newest solution for the newest requirements, we have Fire Raptor um, here. Uh, so you have your module level devices connected to your input combiners, um, your overcurrent protection devices here, protect the conductors. Your disconnect relay is the I don't know if you can see my mouse, but the disconnect relay is the black uh, square with, with soft edges above it, um, which is connected to the the FM100 through a combiner or through a breaker in the uh, in the load center. So that would be your PV breaker in your radiant load center um, to inform the FM100 of a, of, a, of a disconnected situation. And then you have your power supply in the load center or or mounted externally, depending on what power supply you buy. Um, if you for a different 24 volt power supply that powers the, um, what's the skew for that one more time, the RF FRS ESW, uh, which you know if you hit that button, and you know for or if a firefighter hits that button, it will open all of the contacts in the modulable devices and it will um, inform the ICS Plus to open the relay as well. So you can see again here. Your option is also to add a relay directly to the FM100 to communicate uh, to communicate to the yellow and purple ports that uh, that an AF that a rapid shutdown event has occurred. Um, got about one minute left here. The inside of IMO's FRS dash ESW is two DIN terminals, DIN mounted terminals, a switch, and a power supply, um, which goes to the power supply source. Um, the DIN terminals are connected connect through that relay to the charge controller and the ICS Plus uh, connects directly to the, or well, rather the, the FRS dash O and module of the devices connect to the ICS Plus combination OCPDs. Um, and the white paper will have, you know, you'll be able to review the white paper at your leisure as soon as it comes out. I'll make sure that we send it to everybody. Um, Tygo uh, TS4-R-S and TS4-S module level devices are available. Um, once again, this should be the RSD-AFCI and we'll go back and last thing I'll do before I go is review the, the new products that we just released on the price list to make sure that you can communicate with those about to your distributor. Um, and you can see the Tygo situation here with the Cloud Connect gateway combined with their with their uh, double normally open dual circuit switch and wired across a dry contact to the purple and yellow terminals for the FM100 that uh, communicate the rapid shutdown event. Uh, go back to the detail side here. So I'll give you a moment to quickly review this and then we'll go back to the, um, the light, latest integrations. Check if I can see any last questions. All 
I'll make sure Kevin uh, have another uh, another person asking to see the white paper on the FM80 um, FM60 with 100 combinations. So maybe I'll send that out to everybody as well. In the same email with the uh, rapid shutdown white paper. Oh, okay, so Eric, you were asking about the battery current. Okay, the short circuit values from the batteries are added. Equipment must be right. Okay, all right, Eric, that helped. I appreciate that clarification. Once again, I will I will follow up with you um, offline because I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I the first, this first time I've had a question about that directly, as far as I'm aware, uh, the 100 amp charging limit is is fixed, but I will uh, I will see what I can find out about that. Um, and Eric, great question about the the Simplify batteries. I know Simplify is going to have all of the information you could ask for on their website. Uh, he's asking for the lithium ion battery uh, ohmic values and short circuit values. I know that Simplify is going to have as much as we. So we just recently uh, got that U1540 listing. So Simplify is going to have a lot of that uh, on their website, but we will also be adding documentation for those batteries to our website soon. Um, and I will, yes, I will make sure to send out a copy of the presentation. So for the, for everybody that's on the line, we'll go back real quickly to the uh, to the new integrations, and so you make sure that you you to make sure that you can uh, know what you're asking for if you talk to your distributor. So. The new load centers, the GSLC PV300 VEC, PV1 for single charge controller, um, and then the 230 volt versions of those for 230 volt AC markets with 230 volt grids. Um, moving on, uh, once again, really do take a look at the flex power um, with FM100 uh, price points and think about how each. FM100 is going to have 2,000 watts more PV capacity than a FM80. So you're really, for just for an FMPR, you're looking at a price difference in the low hundreds with, uh, with 4,000 watts more PV capacity. And when you consider the actual price to, so that's, you know, instead of 8,000, you get 12,000. And you're looking at, that's that's a 50% increase in, in PV capacity for a, for a much smaller fractional increase in price. Um, it becomes very clear that the these new flex power systems are much higher value, uh, at the very least, uh, power to price, much higher power to price ratio than the than the previous um, generation of flex power systems. Um, and then, of course, the new system edges, another popular option for folks who have, uh, you know, they just want a turnkey solution, which is uh, more and more popular these days. And we made sure that they're designed for several applications. You have off-grid, your energy management with the Simplify batteries, the high cycle life, of course, and then the backup with the PLRs for anybody who wants to ensure that they have plenty of uh, plenty of energy in the case of a power outage or um, an emergency situation or anything like that. Um, so we have all you know six of these new systems. There are new Skybox packages as well, just FYI. So definitely take a look at the, the new System Edge um, section of the website. Some of the marketing material is to, uh, to be created, um, but these packages are all available are all available now and ready to ship. All right, so really appreciate everybody attending. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and wrap it up a few minutes early, and uh, I'll make sure to follow up with a uh, recording of the webinar and a copy of the slides. And I'll, any questions I missed, if I go through and I see any questions I missed, I'll make sure to uh, to reach out. Um, and get your questions answered uh, as quickly as possible. So do expect to hear from you. And I appreciate your input on the polls as well. Very good stuff. Have a have an excellent day, everybody, and uh, look forward to the next webinar.